I now look to Professor Richard Swinburne to close the case of the proposition. What would a thriving society be like? Well, it would care for its members, it, it would love its members, they would love each other. It would seek to develop its members, it would seek understanding of the world, grow in understanding the world, it would seek to uh, control the world in the sense of the uh, environment, it would seek to extend human knowledge of the environment, it would seek to encourage debate about the nature of the environment, it would be tolerant of different beliefs. Um, by that criterion, as many of the speakers have pointed out, most religious societies have fallen short. But what none of the speakers seem to have mentioned is that by this criterion, in the last century, uh, th at least three enormous societies have been explicitly anti-religious, have persecuted religion in a very big way. Hitler's Germany, Stalin's Russia, Mao's China. And remember what the society was that boasted to be the first society of a first country of atheism in the world. It was Albania, communist Albania. And how did it achieve this? Well, it knocked down all the churches and killed the believers, and it achieved its aim. So I don't think on this score we ought to be exchanging bad examples. Uh, we have all fallen short. What we ought to be looking at is good examples. What would a good atheist society be like? And yeah, it wouldn't be too bad. Uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be too bad if times are good. Um, and what would a good religious society be like? It would be a lot better. Now then, um, human beings are a mixture of good and bad. There are good aspects of our character which have nothing to do with our religious beliefs. We have natural affection for each other, we have natural curiosity, uh, we want to make a contribution to things, uh, we want to help people, at least to a small reasonable extent. Um, but we are also built, as religion has always pointed out, uh, there is, we are fallen in many ways. We seek our own uh, advantage at the expense of others. We want more share of our influence, more share of the goods of life, uh, more share of reputation, more share of sex, of uh, drink, of drugs, or, than we ought to have. And uh, so long as uh, the world is uh, ticking along with no big problems, uh, an atheist society can probably do all right. There'll be a lot of, there'll be a lot of casualties, casualties of broken homes, casualties of people who seize power, but they won't be enormous casualties. But, but bad times always come, and bad times will come to our society before too long. Um, not merely pollution and uh, climate change, but, and I speak as one who uh, is getting older, we are all getting older. And uh, the time will come in the not too distant future when there will be a few young people and many old people who need looking after. That will be very difficult for society. And that's just one illustration of the problems that strike society so frequently and so often, and in that, in, in that situation, uh, uh, the atheist has a problem. The atheist will reflect uh, that, yes, he's willing to do a bit for other people. Yes, of course. But after all, he says, uh, I've only got one life. I came here by chance. Uh, I don't owe anything to anybody. Why shouldn't I have a fairly good time? Reasonable enough, I don't do too much bad to people, I'm just like other people. That is a very natural reaction when times are hard. 
And when times are hard, what we really need is not people who just do the right thing on the whole, we need heroes. We need people who are prepared to do a lot more than they're obliged to. Uh, to to give up their lives for a good cause, to give up their lives for others in a just war, to give up their uh, prospects of family and home to help people in distant countries. And it's only when you've got that sort of people around and in big numbers that society is really going to thrive because only then are people going to care for each other in difficulties. Um, so, in that situation, the religious person has a great advantage. Do you know of the effective altruist movement, which is a secular movement which consists of people who donate a large share of their income to help other people? So why do we need religion to have these heroes? Uh, yes, since you mentioned... <laughs> Uh, since you mentioned statistics, um, I have been looking at statistics also recently. And um, the, uh, there is a big organization in America which has collected all sorts of statistics from all sorts of studies about uh, which people give money to charity. And what they found is that giving to charity was, and giving large sums to charity and giving significant proportion of income was far greater among uh, religious believers than it, than it was among atheists. And it wasn't just that the religious believers g gave to their churches. A far greater proportion of religious believers gave to secular causes than of atheists. Uh, the proportion of atheists in the United States uh, who gave to secular causes was only about a third the proportion of religious believers who gave to secular causes was two-thirds. And similar statistics apply in this country. Uh, people are moved by their religion. They are moved by their religion abundantly. And all the st studies bear out. One recent uh, British study uh, commented that 71% uh, of people who they surveyed and gave to charity cited their religious beliefs as a primary motivation. Now, I was going to mention that point a little later, but I came in now. And I now ask, why is that? Why are religious people so moved? And the answer surely must be that we are moved by gratitude. Um, if you're a religious person, you believe that the world didn't come into being by chance. It was brought into being by God, it is conserved by God, all the good things we have are due to God, who brings about the operation of laws of nature, which brings about the good things to us. And all our ability to help anybody else is, is because of the constitution of the world, which is designed and continued by God, that is the religious belief. And furthermore, the religious person will reflect that they themselves have been brought into existence by God. Uh, if uh, uh, there's only two possible, your parents may, may have chosen to have a child, goodness, uh, parents may have chosen to have a child, uh, but they didn't choose to have you, and that you came into existence was either a matter of chance or it was brought about by God. And for the religious believer, it was brought about by God. And therefore, the religious believer is moved by great gratitude. And therefore, he wants to uh, do something to please his creator. And the obvious way to please a creator is to help his work. And therefore, to love and care for his other children. And so there is a natural motivation in religion to care for people and to care for people beyond goodness uh, to give your life to causes. And the, the statistics and much else bear out that it is largely the religious people who do this. Of course, some there are uh, atheistic heroes, but my point is the, whole, the way we are made is going to make it a lot more difficult for them and possible for religious people, so that religious people will help uh, others in big ways and will help to forward 
uh, our understanding of the world in big ways. And they also, of course, have the hope of heaven. Heaven is not a reward so much for good works, but a home for good people. And if people want uh, to, if people live good lives, that every time you do a good deed, it becomes easier to do one next time. And every time you do a bad deed, it becomes easier to do one next time. And uh, God offers to people the prospect of going on doing good deeds, for that is what heaven is about, doing, doing good deeds when it's easier to do them than on earth. And so that prospect too encourages people to the prospect that they will be able to make themselves the sort of people who are worth keeping alive forever in the presence of their creator. That is an enormous stimulus. And for these reasons, uh, religion is bound to make society thrive under difficult circumstances as well as under easy circumstances. Of course, if it were the case that it's an illusion, that would uh, not be a good thing. But in fact, the strongest evidence for religion is science, the very success of science. But what does science amount to? Uh, the operation of scientific laws. What is it to have a scientific law? It is for every atom in the universe to behave in exactly the same way as every other atom, in accordance with uh, Newton's or quantum theory or whatever. And that is a very extraordinary thing. It's, uh, they behave in a way that humans can understand, they behave in a way that are productive of human bodies, they behave in a way that make conscious beings. And that this, there should be this enormous coincidence, is it quite extraordinary and needs an explanation which the atheist is utterly unable to provide. Um, but there is a good explanation of this, that is to say, these things are necessary for our existence, for the existence of human beings. Human beings are a good thing because we have great choices, choices between good and evil. We can make a contribution to things in a way that animals or inanimate things can't. And God wants, a good God would want to share his creative work in a small way with other beings. And so, he, the universe is fitted for us to make a difference to it. It's a half-formed universe. Of course there is suffering, but the suffering does in the end serve a good purpose. It gives, only if we are allowed to harm as well as to benefit people uh, can we have real responsibility for them. And so, for a limited period, God allows us to make a mess of the world, but only for a limited period, 100 years or so for each of us. And God provides opportunity for us forming our character by the diseases and accidents which come to us, which we can learn to react to in a good way and form ourselves the sort of persons deserving of heaven forever. And the, the, without a God, you couldn't explain science. Religion makes sense of the world, it's probably true, it, uh, nothing in life is certain, but this one is more certain than many things. It's probably true, and guided by it, we can thrive in difficult circumstances, and humans are not perfect by nature, they need help, and that help is available with this probably true belief. So yes, of course, we need it to thrive, even if it's sometimes made a mess of things, and as atheism has sometimes made a mess of things.